these are uh, sketches of uh, I've done in black and white and gray on UPO paper, and it's to show the abstract design of them. And this demonstration is going to work through the processes, the thinking process that I have in uh, organizing the abstract qualities. Uh, there's some that I've done in water-soluble pencils, which I'm not too pleased with, but I thought I'd show them anyway, uh, so you can do it with that. But uh, it's very, it's much easier to do it with uh, paint on UPO paper. Uh, the abstract underpainting, that is the uh, area where you're going to start uh, putting in a design that's touching the uh, four sides of the paper called a cruciform and uh, basically do it in a lighter value than I am doing it right here because it's just a little too dark but it'll uh, be okay and then also uh, look for the patterns of the lights and the uh, the darks uh, are they interesting are the white shape interesting or are the uh, black shapes interesting then I use a roller to roll on top just to even it out uh, so that I got an even texture and you don't see the brush strokes as much. And then I, I uh, proceed to, uh, to, to dry, dry it. it. Now, the next, now the next thing is to uh, use a Kleenex and start wiping out, removing some of the dark and look at the black shapes as are they interesting enough uh, as a viewer to stand alone. And also, uh, what percentage of white and dark do you have? You should have a dominance of white or dominance of dark. Now, using a soluble, uh, soluble uh, pencil, this is a uh, 2B, uh, fairly thick. I'm drawing the head of a, uh, of, a, of a chicken, only made up. I'm not using any pictures or anything like that. Uh, just simplified, stylized uh, type of... Uh, of chicken and I'm looking to see exactly where I would want it in relationship to that dark area that that I'm drawing. Now I, I looked at that little piece of uh, gray that I've drawn there and I thought well that would be a nice place to put a chicken that's sort of feeding on the ground uh, and then so I drew that in there that gave me a big shape and a small shape and now I'm trying to look to see where I would put the next one. I like to cover this area all the way down in front and then across and overlapping on top of the big uh, rooster that I have already uh, drawn. And, uh, and so then I'm blocking it in. And you can see the, the negative spaces that are inside. Now erasing edges. That's most important because when you erase an edge, you have overlapped or underlapped. And also you have created some sort of abstraction. For instance, I'll erase the edge on this, not with an eraser, but with a damp Kleenex. Uh, I found out that the eraser was leaving an oil stain on the UPO paper, and then it would not not take paint. Now, in this particular case, I'm adding a third value, which is a little darker than the first value that I had on. And remember, I said that first value maybe should have been a little bit lighter. And so now I'm going to have to go darker in order to see it better. And it's a negative space uh, uh, painting that I'm doing. So you can see the uh, form of the, uh, of the rooster. And as I bring down this dark uh, form, I'm just going to leave it because I don't know exactly where I'm going to go with it. So I'll just stop right there and I'll look for another place to put to see if I can define this rooster. But not completely. I don't want to outline it completely with the black. And then I'll do a little bit more erasing, wiping out with a clean Kleenex so I can sort of see what that looks like. You see all the negative space and the positive in the rooster have uh, emerged. Then on the other side, I'm using a lighter value and seeing where I can do some connecting. I am not tied to anything that I've drawn before. I am always uh, analyzing what's in front of me and making changes. And so you see where that uh, racer was, it was crawling. So I learned a little thing right there that you can't erase with an eraser on UPO paper because it will leave a, a uh, oil. And sometimes that's nice. Uh, so I'm using a lighter value 
and then it's really wet at this point in time so I'm going to dry it totally to the touch and then I'm going to go working in here and say okay I'm going to bring some of that dark up into this chicken here that's about as far as I want to go I'm only looking at the shapes of things and not chicken uh, so I'm going to bring that across there and uh, it takes a little while of thinking to see where you're going to put the next value and so I'm analyzing and think okay I like that the dark against light instead of doing the background because I didn't want another dark up that high and so that sort of told me that that end of the chicken should be that value. And as I as I analyze the end of the end of the shape that I'm doing here, I want it to be not too busy, and that's a little too busy. But we'll all change it. Uh, okay, now with the uh, water soluble pencil, I'm drawing in another head uh, to where I want the uh, chicken to end, and I'm going to erase the other one that I had on it that I drew at first. Okay, and then using the uh, side of the brush, this is a flat brush, um, using uh, black watercolor paint. Uh, I'm uh, just bringing that dark all the way down to touch the lower edge of the uh, composition. Uh, they call it the format, the edges of your, of your paper. It's called format. And then you try to, uh, inside that format, you try to... Uh, organize your whites, your middle values, your darks in an interesting way. So I'm looking here and I'm thinking, okay, I think maybe I will put a big rooster tail up on that particular side. And I think that's working pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to uh, leave it. What's nice thing about this UFO paper is that you can erase it. Uh, so that's the beauty of, of doing it like this. Uh, you can do uh, finished paintings too. It doesn't have to be just for sketches. Uh, but for sketches it works great. Now I'm going to try to connect the whites. And so I'm going to rub out with my Kleenex again and I'm going to do some connecting. And when I connect, I'm starting to form a more of an abstract pattern and you have to look for the rooster to find if there's a rooster there or if there isn't. And so what I'm doing now is in the, I thought oh, I don't need that light over on that side so I'm going to block that out, put a few darks there and then I'm using the brush to wipe out also and continue that right through there and connect that white right through there and then I think what I'll do is I'll work on this head right here and make that light uh, down there and connect it with the, uh, the body. All of this is experimental. Uh, you, uh, you're looking for a pattern that is either all dark, mostly dark, with a little bit of white and gray or mostly white with a little bit of dark and gray. Those three values don't have them equal in, in quantity. So right now I got more mid middle value than light. And the second, the minor one is the dark. But the dark is powerful because it's dark and it's one of the bigger shapes. So I'm going to uh, erase that whole side over there just by making it one value. Uh, with uh, with water and a little bit of, of, of paint. Now uh, this is uh, connecting with the uh, damp brush. You see, so you can you can make some nice lines, and I'm going to work on this head up here a little bit see if I can get that uh, rooster to look at us instead of uh, away. And then putting a little bit more black back into the negative space. 
So I'm reshaping the uh, the rooster. Now down here I thought I'd put a leg with this particular rooster or chicken. And then I got just a little bit too literal. Uh, I felt that that was just too much action. And so I'm, uh, I'm going to take that out. And I got a little, uh, my black is mixed up with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And, uh, and so sometimes I get a little bit more blue with it. Now you edit with a wet tissue. You see, so what I'm doing here is I'm being very, very uh, bold. Sometimes you have to be bold in order to see what's the other side of that mountain or the road that you're climbing. In this particular case, by taking all of that out, I'm able to see if, it, if we're going to if we're going to use more white than black. And so uh, it's only a sketch. And so I'm still working on it, and I'm thinking that well, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll put in now a lighter a lighter value, and of course, don't go by the blue that I have; it should really be gray. But it's the value is the most important part. It's a uh, it's a lighter value than inside the uh, the chicken, and uh, and so that now will set off the white. So the We'll have a dominant uh, middle value, light middle value as the dominant value in this sketch. And this line right here is disturbing because I've outlined the entire chicken with a line that I didn't like. So what I'm doing here is trying to remove it. And just as an example, uh, you want that completely gone. Uh, otherwise, you still read it as outline even though it's faintly done. So I'm using the eraser again and that will be an oil spot there but I want that to go flow right into that that chicken so you don't you see the chicken and then you don't see the chicken and then using a little uh, darker value uh, thicker paint I'm going to do the connection between the left and the right side with the the black value It just takes a while to uh, analyze it and see where you want to go. That's why my brush goes up and down on the painting, just to see. Now, I don't like the curved line of that. I think it should be a little bit more characteristics of a tail uh, feather type of thing. So I'm going to put a couple lines coming out. I want to be too literal, but at least something. I think that's uh, that looks good. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, now, this would be a preliminary to a larger painting that I plan on doing.